You switched to diet soda, dumped sugar-free sweetener in your coffee, and stocked your fridge with zero-calorie everything. The scale didn't budge an inch, and suddenly, you felt hungrier than when you were drinking the regular stuff. Ever wonder why that happened? Today I'll explain why artificial sweeteners can sabotage your fat loss even though they have zero calories, like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand whether those diet drinks are helping you. Or are they just keeping you trapped in the same craving cycle you were trying to escape? Here's the thing nobody tells you about artificial sweeteners. They don't have calories. That part's completely true. Your body can't turn aspartame or sucralose into energy the way it turns sugar into fuel. But thinking that's the whole story is like thinking your car only needs gas and nothing else matters. The missing calories aren't actually the problem here. It's what's happening inside your brain every single time you take a sip. Those sweeteners are lighting up the exact same taste receptors that sugar does. Your brain gets the signal that something intensely sweet just arrived, and it starts preparing for the sugar rush. Except the sugar never comes, and your body got catfished. It showed up to the party expecting cake, and all it got was a picture of cake. So what does your brain do? It keeps waiting, and it keeps wanting more. And those cravings don't just disappear because you saved 140 calories on a can of soda. Imagine you've been watching fireworks every single night for years. Then someone hands you a sparkler and says, this is your entertainment now. That sparkler might be perfectly fine on its own, but compared to what you're used to, it feels like nothing. That's what happens to your taste buds when you train them on intense sweetness. An apple used to taste sweet, but now it tastes like crunchy water. A bowl of oatmeal used to feel satisfying, but now it feels like punishment. Your brain has been conditioned to expect fireworks, so normal food registers as boring. You finish your grilled chicken and vegetables, and 20 minutes later, you're standing in front of the pantry wondering why you're not satisfied. It's not because you actually need more food. It's because your taste buds are stuck in candy mode, waiting for the sweetness that makes everything feel complete. Scientists call this appetite compensation, and it's where the whole zero calorie promise falls apart. You save 150 calories by drinking diet soda instead of regular. You feel virtuous, and you logged it in your app and everything. But then dinner rolls around, and you eat an extra serving because the first one didn't hit right. Or you grab a snack two hours later because you're somehow still hungry. Or you order dessert because you saved room with that diet drink earlier. Suddenly you've eaten 200 extra calories without even realizing it. The math doesn't care that the sweetener had zero calories. Your body compensated and found those calories elsewhere. The sweetener didn't cause weight gain directly, but it didn't solve the real problem either. It just moved the problem to a different part of your day where you weren't paying attention. Here's where it gets counterintuitive. Some studies show people who drink diet soda regularly actually gain more weight over time than people who drink regular soda. Not because the sweetener has secret calories hiding in there, but because it keeps the craving loop alive. You never break up with sweetness. You're still in a relationship with it every single day. Your brain is still expecting that sweet reward multiple times a day. And when the fake stuff doesn't deliver the satisfaction, you go looking for it somewhere else. Maybe it's the bread basket at dinner. Maybe it's the handful of chips you didn't plan to eat. The diet soda gave you permission to eat more elsewhere, and your brain took that deal every single time. This matters to you because most people use artificial sweeteners as a permanent solution when they're really only useful as a temporary bridge. If you're coming off three cans of regular Coke a day, yeah, switching to diet is better. You're cutting hundreds of grams of sugar out of your life. That's real progress. But parking there forever is where the problem starts. That's like saying you quit smoking by switching to vaping and then never putting the vape down. You didn't solve the addiction. You just found a cleaner delivery system for it. Your brain is still hooked on the sensation of sweetness. And as long as you're feeding that circuit, you're making it harder to feel satisfied by normal food. Fat loss isn't just about cutting calories out. It's about fixing your relationship with what food is supposed to taste like. Now here's what actually works if you want to break free. Use zero calorie products as a bridge, not a destination. If you're drinking four diet sodas a day, don't try to quit cold turkey and suffer through it. That's miserable and you'll probably crack in three days. Instead, set a sweet window. Maybe one diet drink a day and only after lunch or only on weekends. Create a boundary so your brain isn't getting hit with intense sweetness from morning to night. Then, over the next few weeks, start diluting it. Mix half soda, half sparkling water. 
then more water, less soda. Or space it out. If you're having one every afternoon, push it to every other afternoon. Let your tolerance for sweetness start to drop. Here's what you'll notice after about two weeks of dialing down the sweetness. An apple will taste like dessert. Not kind of sweet, actually sweet. A bowl of plain Greek yogurt with some berries will feel like a treat instead of a punishment. That's your taste buds resetting. You're retraining your brain to recognize normal levels of sweetness as satisfying instead of boring. And once that happens, fat loss gets easier. You're not fighting cravings all day. You're not standing in front of the fridge at 9 p.m. trying to figure out what's missing. You're actually satisfied by real food. Your hunger signals start working the way they're supposed to. You eat, you feel full, you move on with your life. No drama, no second guessing. The trap most people fall into is thinking they can have it both ways forever. They wanna lose fat, but also keep the intense sweetness they've always loved. It's like wanting to save money, but also buying everything you used to buy. The math doesn't work. At some point, you have to let go of the thing that's keeping you stuck. And for a lot of people, that thing is the expectation that food should taste like a theme park every single time. It doesn't have to. Food can just be food. It can taste good without tasting like a science experiment designed to hijack your dopamine receptors. But you'll never get there if you're still mainlining artificial sweetness multiple times a day. The sweetener companies won't tell you this because their entire business model depends on you never breaking the habit. They want you to believe you can have your cake and eat it too, as long as the cake has zero calories. But the research is pretty clear. For some people, artificial sweeteners are fine. They drink a diet soda, move on with their day, and it doesn't affect their appetite or cravings at all. For other people, it's a disaster. Every diet drink makes them hungrier, keeps the sweet tooth alive, and makes fat loss feel impossible. The only way to know which camp you're in is to try cutting it out completely for a couple weeks and see what happens. If you suddenly feel less hungry and your cravings chill out, you have your answer. Here's something most people don't realize. Your brain doesn't distinguish between real sugar and fake sugar when it comes to the reward circuit. Both light up the same pathways. Both trigger the same dopamine release. Both make you want more. The only difference is that real sugar delivers the calories your brain expects, while fake sugar leaves you hanging. That mismatch drives the compensatory eating later. To recap, artificial sweeteners have zero calories, but they keep your brain expecting intense sweetness, which makes normal food taste boring. You might save calories from the drink, but then eat more later without realizing it. That's appetite compensation. The science shows some people gain more weight on diet soda than regular because the cravings never go away. Use zero calorie stuff as a bridge to help you transition, not a permanent parking spot. Set a sweet window and slowly reduce how much sweetness you're exposing yourself to every day. After a couple weeks, your taste buds reset and real food starts tasting good again. That's when fat loss actually gets easier because you're not fighting your brain anymore. So here's what I wanna know. Are you willing to give up diet drinks for two weeks to see if your cravings disappear? Or are you convinced they're the only thing keeping you from going back to regular soda?